Hello and welcome to my latest video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brief project that I did that is a UART to I squared C converter. I recently was lucky enough to come across uh, some samples from Microchip of their latest 8-pin microcontroller, the PIC16F 15214. Uh, it's kind of an interesting product. It's arguably the most powerful of the 8-pin microcontrollers that I've seen. Uh, and it's definitely the most powerful that comes inherently in a DIP package. Let's take a look at the different 8-pin micros that are out there from Microchip and their acquired Atmel. If we go to the 8-bit microcontroller area and pick 8 bits, we find a number of different options out there. Uh, all of these chips cost under a dollar. Uh, but in my case, I'm looking to do a I squared C to UART bridge, actually UART to I squared C. And so I'm going to need at least one UART and at least one I squared C because I don't want to go to the trouble of bit banging those. Uh, so as we see, then the list actually gets quite small. And as I look through here, there's one that stands out for a communication bridge, and that's the 16F15214 uh, for the simple reason that it has twice the amount of RAM that any of the other chips do. Therefore, the potential buffers that we can put together would be more than twice as deep as some of our memory will be eaten up for stack space or variables or what have you. Uh, the other thing that I like about the uh, 15214 is that it runs from 1.8 all the way to 5.5. You can see that all of these do. One of the things that separates the PIC from the AT tiny parts is the fact that it can run at its full speed at voltages as low as two and a half volts, uh, as opposed to the AT tinies which uh, ramp across their entire range up to four and a half volts. So since this is an interface device, I like the idea of being able to hook up to five volt and 3.3 volt uh, devices as Arduinos tend to come in both of those flavors. The older ones are five volts, newer ones tend to be 3.3. And I can use the full power of the microcontroller without any concern about the, uh, the voltage as with some of the AT tinies. Uh, the chip is a generally capable chip, has A to D converters, uh, some capture compare registers. Uh, one of the things that's really nice about it is that it has a peripheral pin select, which allows us to essentially assign any of the uh, functions to the six pins that are available for GPIO. Note that pin number four is also the M clear slash uh, programming voltage pin. This particular pin is input only. One of the downsides of an 8-pin chip is the fact that when you're debugging, uh, your M clear and your uh, debugger are going to be using up three of these six available pins. That makes it really hard to make a particular bridge. Uh, on the 16F15214, these two pins right here are going to be connected to your PIC kit or ICD debugger. This one will be uh, connected to your reset pin, which leaves these three. So for the debugging I did with this and development I did with this, the pin that I felt was least important was the transmit back out. Um, there was not a lot of complexity around there. So I used the peripheral pin select to put it on these two pins that are tied up during the debugger. And when I need to actually be able to transmit back, then I, tra then I use it blind uh, being programmed instead of debugged. Uh, so one of the possible ways around this is if you look at uh, the family, there are also some 14 pin chips. And again, because there's a peripheral pin select, it's relatively easy to redirect those pins to other places. Uh, so as I get into more complicated projects with this chip, my guess is I'll do my development on one of the 14 pins that has the same silicon, but uh, less pins pulled out. Putting this project together was relatively simple. Most of the work was done for me by the uh, microchip code configurator tool. I really only pulled in two uh, functions, the USART 
and the MSSP, which is what drives the I squared C. The, uh, and it automatically set up interrupt driven buffers for me for the USART, both transmit and receive. And the uh, MCC also set up a I squared C master code framework that took almost all of the programming effort uh, out of it. I had to write some glue logic that would interpret the uh, UART input into frames. You know, it's an unframed protocol list uh, uh, serial bus and then do the appropriate things out over the I squared C. So essentially, there was only one file here that uh, that I worked in, and that was my main. This is a quick and dirty project at this point that'll be refined later. So all of our all of the work is essentially in one big function. I set up a command protocol that would come in over UART. Uh, pretty simple. Each command starts with a caret, ends with a dollar sign. I'm a, friend, a fan of regular expressions, so that made sense to me. I've got a couple of buffers here that take the incoming UART command and put together a UART response. The state machine is quite simple. We're either waiting for a start, we're waiting for the command byte. The command byte can be either W or R for read or write. Uh, in the future, I anticipate adding a, a version command that will let you pull the firmware version that this is. Uh, potentially a, a command that will let you change from 400 kilobits per second to you know, an arbitrary speed of your choice. And possibly we've got two pins here that are not being used for anything else. Uh, possibly some simple protocol that would allow you to utilize those pins as GPIO or, uh, or analog readings into the whoever was controlling the UART, be that a PC or uh, another embedded system like Arduino or Raspberry Pi or what old have you. The main is very simple. Essentially, it runs in a while one loop. And when a byte comes in, the automatically generated code returns true from this function. And it looks to see what state are we in? Are we waiting for a start? Are we waiting for our command byte? Are we waiting for the length of the variable part of the packet? Or are we waiting for data? And you can see that I set my enumerated types to the high end of these. Uh, because we're also using this single variable to keep track of our counts. We want to try to keep everything inside of eight bits and, uh, and have as few different variables that we access as possible. This chip runs on the microchip mid-range 8-bit enhanced platform, which means that it uh, is not the greatest, I would say not as good as the ATtiny at executing uh, C code. The good news is that the enhanced mid-range uh, does have the ability to linearly address data so that we can have uh, we can have arrays that are essentially as large as we want up to the size of the microcontroller's memory. So essentially, if you want to take a look through the code, I will have this up here on, uh, on GitHub here some point in the near future uh, after I've had a chance to revise it a little bit and clean it up. Uh, there's also a lot of functions in here that are unused or that are more generalized coming out of the MCC automated code than I might need. I probably also would scale those back a little bit, make them a little bit less versatile and a little bit more efficient. Uh, but as you can see, the entire thing basically fits in one uh, state machine. There's not a whole lot to it. So now let's take a look at the hardware. For my converter, I used a simple breadboard. Uh, this is an adapter for an ESP8266 ESP01 uh, programming device, but uh, essentially it is just a USB to UART converter, and it happens to have a 3.3 volt LDO on it. And so it's become one of my favorite mini development boards. You plug USB into it, you get a serial port, and you get a 3.3 volt output. If you want to get fancy, you can also solder a wire to the bottom so that you get a 5 volt output. Uh, it's very convenient. You can get them on AliExpress for about two bucks each. Uh, so here we can see it's a very simple uh, uh, circuit. 
We have hidden underneath here, there's a single capacitor that is our bypass capacitor across VDD and ground. Uh, I put two pull-up resistors on there. I had 5K resistors handy. Uh, would prefer something a little bit uh, a little bit smaller for a little stronger pull-up, but it'll work fine for this test. Uh, got two wires here that are attached to the SCL and SDA. I used yellow and blue. That corresponds with the uh, new quick system that SparkFun has uh, for daisy chaining I squared C devices together with a nice uh, convenient connector. So to test out our system, I've got a LSM uh, 6D uh, S3 uh, accelerometer and gyro. And we're not going to try to do a whole lot with that. But essentially, I've got it wired up here so that we can connect up the I squared C bus. And then, as I said, we're going to be pulling our power uh, from the USB connector. So that should give us power, ground, and our I squared C. The USB to serial connection will hook up to the transmit and receive on that side of the pick. And then so that we can see what's going on, I've got my uh, digital oscilloscope hooked up to the uh, clock and data pins for the I squared C. So let's hook this guy up and give it a go. In order to be able to do anything with this, we need, the, uh, we need to be able to send serial data. And in order to do that, I whipped together a, a quick and dirty uh, C sharp app that basically just opens a uh, serial port. It has some code that I borrowed from another project that parses strings into hex uh, characters. Don't worry about how all that works uh, right now, but you'll be able to see the, the demo. And then anytime you cut and paste code, it's probably wrong, but I did that for convenience just to have two separate windows that I could send things out of. So essentially this is going to send data out of the uh, serial port and read it back in. Let's make it go. Open serial. That USB COM port that I have is COM12. And I know that the chip that I have attached is this uh, LSM6 DS3 uh, accelerometer. So in order to make this work, the first thing I have to do is send it an I squared C command that enables the accelerometer. Uh, so here we have, this is my own little proprietary way of describing bytes. We have a caret followed by the number W, a three, which indicates that there will be three bytes that follow, 6a is the address of the accelerometer, the I squared C address. 10 hex is the register address that we want to write to. And then we're going to write a single byte 0x38, which is the magic bits that turn on the accelerometer. So let's hit send. And at this point, the accelerometer should be uh, configured. Now, it's very difficult to see anything interesting happen. So let's run that one more time, only this time we'll run it with, an ex with a logic analyzer in place. So we hit send. We can see that we got a little bit of traffic there. What do we have? And so we wrote D4 is uh, 6A shifted one to the left to make room for the read write byte. We sent out the 10, which is the register address. We sent out the 38 which is the value, and we got X back so that we, we know the chip is talking back to us. Next, let's send out uh, a write of address 28. We're not actually gonna write any data to that, but that's the address of the accelerometer data. We'll send that out. We saw we got a little blip here, and now, we're going to read what's at address 28. And we can see, okay, we got uh, values back.
from the accelerometer. We did the read and the read was successful. So the value it sent us back was uh, CFFF. Uh, so let's try one more uh, read just to make sure that things are going well. We can take a look at the uh, register description. Who am I? is kind of like the hello world of I squared C's. And we can see that it should come back with a value of six, nine. So let's do a read on, ad on register address F. Again, the device address doesn't change. And in this case, we're only gonna read one byte. So send that out. Did we get our logic analyzer again? And send out the read. And take a look in here and see what came across on the I squared C traffic. And it reads back as 069, which is exactly what we expect to see from the Who Am I register. And here we have, this is a hex for caret hex for R, the 6A, which is the device address. It told me I read one byte and the value was 69 hex. So we can see that our I squared C bridge is working. Uh, if you have any comments, if you have any suggestions for a feature that should be added to this, or if you have a experience with I squared C or uh, features or bugs that you've dealt with in other protocol converters, uh, please leave me a comment below or hit me up on LinkedIn and let me know uh, what's going on and uh, you know any recommendations that you have. If people are interested enough on this, maybe I'll program a handful of them and throw them up on Amazon in case somebody else finds them to be useful. In any case, you can always download the code off of GitHub and uh, program your own if you have some chips and an ICD4 or a PIC kit 4 hanging around. So thank you very much for your time. Broadwell Consulting Incorporated provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware, which is compliant with IEC 62304, ISO 14971, and ISO 13485, as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwell Consulting.